Hi, it's Dr. Maggie Perry with Tell Me What You're Proud Of. Today is the third session um, with client Jared. And so this month we're talking about experiential avoidance and trying to avoid avoidances. And so Jared, can you tell us more about how you're doing? Let's just start there. Yeah, um, I mean, it's been, there's, it's been a challenging, uh, I would say it's been a challenging couple of months uh, just because I mean, just because I felt like I have been doing, sorry, let me just start all over right there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I do think that it's been a, I think for me, it's been a challenging couple of months just because, uh, you know, I've been um, engaging in avoidance in a lot of my activities. I felt like, uh, for example, I used to be an avid cyclist and now it just really takes a lot for me to just even take my bike out and I can blame Corona, but I feel like I can blame Corona virus all I want, but at the same time, it, this just feels like the best opportunity to get as much riding out as possible, especially when I'm at home alone. And it was something that I like thought about, you know, a year before, uh, once this whole coronavirus pandemic definitely hit. And the other thing is just, um, uh, the other thing, I, I forget, <laughs> I forget okay, what no my problem. other thing was. Why, but, don't, mm -hmm. why don't I respond to that before we move on to the other thing you're hoping to talk about and the other area of avoidance? So a lot of times when we're thinking about avoidance, um, it's easy to beat yourself up. A lot of people go straight to self-criticism about the things that they're avoiding, particularly when they have awareness of the things they're avoiding. But I like to think about it as like everybody's doing the best they can at all times. So there's likely um, contextual factors, either externally or internally, that are contributing to whatever behavior you're engaging in at any given time. So let's kind of like back up and think that through. So um, basically the behavior that is values driven for you is um, riding your bike, maybe say like on a daily basis, would that be true? Yes, I mean, six days a week, five, six days, yeah, almost on a daily basis, I'd say, yeah. Okay, and some part of you is aware that your schedule changed because of uh, the coronavirus, but talk me through what factors you think contributed to avoiding cycling? Um, well, in the very beginning, I could say that I just, you know, when I was just at home, well, before the whole coronavirus happened, I, I think it's easier to say it this way is that, you know, I was not at home much at all, actually. <laughs> and yeah. so, it was it every time that I did go back home, it was just like a place of rest, a place to relax, a place of calm, you know, a time to hang out with my dog. And so um, it didn't really feel like a place where I had a lot of thoughts that would be running through my head. And so I would actually take my bike out, you know, for commuting. So before the whole coronavirus hit, I would be out of my house all the time. So I would always be traveling. I would always be commuting on my bike. I would always be going to different clients' houses. And, you know, I'm a healthcare worker. And so that's what I did in-home support. Um, but every time I did come back home, it was a place to relax, place to, uh, you know, just not think as much um, and just to hang out, just some peace and quiet for myself or in our time. And so, uh, you know, once coronavirus hit and the opportunity to stay at home was there, you know, in the beginning, I, I thought it was a pretty cool thing. It was pretty novel, I guess you can say, because I went on a gaming bender, uh, which could have been like the start of this whole process. But, um, and after going through that gaming bender, it's just been, I don't know. It's just been tough just trying to get my bike out, uh, yeah. except for the fact that every time that we have to ride with friends or I mean, a group ride with friends. So, yeah. So tell me. So so basically the function of your cycling used to be both commuting and I imagine a time to clear your head and mm -hmm. 
and your home was really a safe space, a place to get rest and restore, and you weren't spending so much time there that you really had to um, navigate a number of different emotional experiences with yourself. So now that you're spending a lot of time at home, and even though you're working, you're not, you don't have the commute, you're not working as frequently, you don't have as much taking up everyday life. Um, how are you managing the thoughts and feelings that you have while you're at home? And how does that relate to having the motivation to go cycling? Um, yeah, it's, you know, I, you know, before, you know, before I felt like I had been feeling better about myself, it would, you know, I would feel a lot of disgust, a lot of, um, a lot of criticism towards myself, especially when I decided not to do something, especially when I decided to avoid something. And so, uh, but now it's been a little bit better, like the self-talk, just having a little bit more compassion with myself um, because a lot of the same thoughts go into my head as what I, you know, back in my rock bottom period. So like things like, you know, I can't do this, you know, like you are so um, like phrases such as you're worthless, you know, you're helpless, you know, you're, you're, you just need to depend on somebody to get your shit going. You know, th there were those thoughts in my head before, um, you know, before I felt like I was starting to feel better. And now it even that has been a little bit of a challenge if I have to be truthful. Um, it's been a bit of self, it's, it's been a bit of self criticism talk lately, but at the same time, um, you know, I am able to show a little bit more self compassion towards the decisions that I've been making. Um, just telling myself that it's okay, but I don't know how, how much longer I can go on with that. <laughs> Because if I just keep avoiding and not making any progress, then, then I feel like there's no point in actually doing that. Then it's probably better if I, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like it would be better to self-criticize than to self, um, to show a little bit more self-compassion sometimes. But Well, uh, I, I imagine self-criticism seems like it's effective when it feels like it's so aversive to be critical that you just want to do the thing so that you don't keep feeling so aversively. But um, let's just talk more about what you think is driving the avoidance rather than kind of cr criticizing yourself into overcoming avoidance. Um, like it makes sense to me how your avoidance started around cycling and that your, your, the, your whole lifestyle is different during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, but what do you think is maintaining it at this point? What makes it hard to just initiate and get on the bike and go for a ride? <sighs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, now that I'm coming to think about it, probably it's a perfectionism issue. Uh, you know, maybe there's a certain time that I want to ride my bike or a certain, like, I only want to ride it in the morning. Um, actually, I don't know. I, I just can't really pinpoint it, to be honest. It's, uh, it's not like I look at it because my bike is always there. It's not like I look at my bike and think it's such a chore. I more look at it and seem like, I need to ride, I should ride, but I don't know exactly what's pushing me back. I just feel like sometimes it's just my lack of discipline or, but at the same time, uh, you know, I mean, I know I shouldn't be thinking that either, uh, but I do feel it's just like a lack of motivation. It's just like a lack of will just well, to be riding these days. I, yeah. Yeah. So let's keep trying to explore. So one thing with like a to-do list that is a common um, a, a common thing that drives uh, um, avoidance for people with their to-do list is they'll have like a number of different things on the to-do list, yes, yes, uh, yes. but it's not, you know, if you have like um, do the dishes, do the laundry, respond to this email and write this paper, um, the fact that like laundry is next to write this paper that is like several like more than one task 
can make it really hard to even want to look at the to-do list to, to get yourself motivated to do anything. So actually breaking things down into steps can be a way to overcome avoidance. Does that resonate at all? Or do, is anything else coming to mind for you? That, yes, that actually just gave me a ding from my head. Good. So tell me more. Uh, like a light bulb. Um, yeah, my my to-do list, you know, I have several to-do lists. I have one on my phone. I have one on my whiteboard right here. And I realized that I do exactly that, like do laundry or like clean the floor, like a, a bath Miko. And then right next to it would be like assignment two, do, or an assignment three, do. And those would be like things for grad school and stuff. And I just find it, and I do have this like let go feeling like giving up, like, ugh, you know, that uh, that sigh that you get after like reading the to-do list and you still haven't gotten those things done yet. And sometimes you just want to not look at it. And so there's times where I just don't want to even look at my to-do list just because I don't want to. I think that is also kind of like the same feeling I get when I don't want to ride my bike or whenever I look at my bike and it's just like, uh, you know? Yeah. Um, so if you were going to try to frame up the task of riding into something that you could easily do and you would immediately feel effective about it, how could you break down what you have in your mind as like in some way, in some way, it sounds like the daily ride has become like, write this paper which is like something that you just want to avoid when you look at it. Um, so how could you change the way you think about what you need to do into something smaller that you're more likely to be effective at? Um, I mean, definitely just trying to plan smaller attainable goals when it comes to just writing would be very, very much a, um, a realistic start, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I kind of hate to say this, but I mean, I do ride my bike, right? Like from CVS and back, but that's not for me. That's not really, that's not even like commuting, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like an 800 feet ride and then you come back and yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's a different type of vibe is a different type of feel. And I am still just trying to get my head around it in terms of why I continue to avoid the activity that I love doing so much, um, or that I used to love doing so much. And I'm still, and which has pretty much completely in a way for the better changed my life. Right. So, um, it's hard. I mean, I, uh, I really can't get my head around it for some reason. I just know that after this whole, I just feel like after this whole pandemic will, uh, ends that I will definitely, that I, f I feel like that I would get back into my pre pandemic self. Um, and really just start focusing back on my health and my, And my, I don't know, just like my writing. Yeah. Are there other things about the way the pandemic's making you feel that's making I, it hard to do more healthy behaviors? Yeah. I mean, now come to think about it, it's not just even writing. I've just been, it's just been hard to do a lot of things, actually. You know, like, uh, you know, even meeting with friends, I would like even avoid that, like last, like last, this past weekend. Um, and I'm just like, oh, I don't, I like, I just don't want to go and meet one before it wasn't really like that for me. I just feel so lethargic, I guess. And that's just been a huge uh, factor in, I guess, uh, just avoiding, avoiding a lot of the activities that I, you know, used to enjoy or used like, like to do. Um, and the weird thing is that I, I mean, I can't really tell if it's like depression or anything. I don't feel depressed. But I do feel like a lot of my symptoms and a lot of the behavior that I've been like kind of trying to be self-aware of have been symptoms of, you know, probably depression or, or some form of anxiety. Um, well, the depression, it sounds like, do you, do you feel interested in cycling or meeting up with your friends? Or, and yeah. then you're, 
Do you feel interested in that, or, or have I, you lost I, interest? I, I do. So that's the th I, that's my thing. I do. Um, I look still like it's still a passion of mine to like you know biking and all that and meeting up with friends. It's like I I am interested in, in that moment, but especially when the time comes. Um, it's just hard for me to just get up and just like get shit done. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, it actually sounds more like a difficulty with initiation than with depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if having structure in your life pre pandemic really helped you maintain initiation. Like once you got going and once you had structure, you kept that going. And now that you don't have structure, it's just really hard on any given day to create structure for yourself and initiate tasks that you find valuable. Oh my God, yes, Maggie. I think you literally described it per perfectly. I don't know why it's so hard to say something so clearly. Um, yeah, I really do think that having that structure, and it's funny, I felt like I was exerting so much more energy back then pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. exerting energy in terms of I've been riding my bike every day for 15 miles, then going to my in-home support, uh, you know, work that I do. Um, and that takes a lot of physical uh, energy out of me too. And the thing is, I felt more alive. So um, yes, I do think that is this lack of initiation that I struggle with on pretty much a constant basis, given my ADHD content. It's just been... Yeah, that's what I, was I hate thinking to too. think about it. Yeah, um, but if sorry to interrupt you, but if I can just talk about that a little bit more in terms of a differential, when we're looking at avoidance in the context of depression, we usually see either sadness, hopelessness, helplessness, guilt, or anhedonia, which means a lack of interest in things that you usually find pleasurable. So Jared, you are not describing depressive symptoms in that way, but avoidance and depression might be kind of similar behavioral presentation where you don't want to see your friends, you don't want to exercise, you don't want to eat or you want to eat too much, you don't want to shower. Those types of things could be happening if you are experiencing depression, where with anxiety, avoidance usually looks like a strong um, physiological experience of anxiety if you go towards something. So if you don't do something, like you don't respond to an email or you don't write that paper, you don't call that friend back, you might not feel any anxiety. But as soon as you were um, in front of the phone about to make the call, you'd probably get anticipatory anxiety. So that would be an indication that it was anxiety dri driving avoidance. And then what you were just describing, Jared, which I really appreciate, was avoidance in the context of ADHD, which is more of a trouble of initiating tasks. And I think in your case, the, um, being totally without structure because of COVID has really made your ADHD symptoms more prominent. Yeah, um, I think that's said perfectly. And I do believe that if I'm able, if I'm kind of forced out of my house, you know, like going to school or going to work um, in that manner, instead of always being on the computer, I think that would kind of, I would, I would hope that it would make a bit of a difference um, in my lifestyle. Uh, I hate to blame it on coronavirus. I really do. Um, well, I wonder, yeah. it's okay, because coronavirus really did change life drastically for most people, and it's okay mm -hmm. to be impacted by that. I wonder if there's any kind of hack, so to speak, where like there, there's a way to create more structure for yourself so to, to get this initiation going. So if something like, as soon as I take out my dog, then I go for a five-mile ride, could you create something like that before you got your day started that might, once you got in the routine of that, it would provide the structure that you needed? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I felt like I've tried to think about that. Like I've definitely thought about that before, but haven't really, you know, put it into action. But if I, but now I guess if I am, I guess if I can get, kept accountable, then it would be much easier. Sure. So are you willing to say, um, do that like two times between now and the next group? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and do you want to make it, is a five mile ride a good, 
um, type of ride to make? Like, is that a good commitment or something more or less would be a better commitment? I think I can start off with it doing like a three mile, a three mile ride. I'll, I'll just need to do that first. Okay. And is it, is it actually a good time for you? Like right after you take out your dog or is there something else that you want to tie? It's always a good idea to tie a new behavioral commitment to some other behavioral commitment that you always do. Like I always brush my teeth and then I take my meds or something like that. Right, so right, right. is I take out my dog and then I ride, I go for a ride. Is that a good yes, for that, you? That's actually a great commitment. Um, and okay. then when I wake up real weird. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds great. Um, is there anything else coming to mind for you before we end? No, I just, uh, no, it's just, those are the things I've really truly been struggling with lately. Um, just with, I think the lack of initiation leading to avoidance. And I feel that that has been just, uh, it's just been playing a huge role uh, right now. And so I just thank you so much for being yeah. able to clear that up. Yeah, you're welcome. And actually, in addition to the huddle groups, which you can, of course, attend, we'll be doing another group podcast. So are you willing to make this commitment for the to talk about in the group podcast? Yes. Yes, okay. definitely. Okay, that sounds great. Then we'll look forward to hearing from you then. Okay, thank you so much, Maggie. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks for being on the show.